The click of my heels on the marble floor echoed through the silent hallway of our apartment. As I pushed open the door, I was greeted not by the usual tranquility of our upscale home, but by a sight that ripped my world apart. There, in the heart of our living room, was my husband Daniel, his arms entwined with Clara, my younger sister. Their laughter died as they noticed me, their guilty faces frozen in a moment of illicit passion. Isabella, this isn't what it looks like, Daniel stammered, hastily disentangling himself. But Clara, ever the provocateur, just smirked, her eyes gleaming with a cruel satisfaction. Oh, but it is, dear sister. Daniel and I, we're in love. Her words, callous and mocking, sliced through my heart. I had always known Clara to be reckless, but this betrayal was beyond comprehension. And Daniel, the man I had devoted my life to, stood there, a picture of guilt but not remorse. Love? My voice was a whisper, a mere shadow of the agony churning inside me. You call this love? Daniel avoided my gaze, his silence more telling than any words. His betrayal was a sharp, bitter realization that our marriage, built on years of trust and companionship, was nothing but a facade. I want a divorce, Isabella, he said finally, his voice cold and detached. The room spun, and for a moment I felt like a bystander in my own life, watching this sordid drama unfold. Clara, still draped in a smug arrogance, moved closer to Daniel, her hand possessively on his arm. "'You should have seen this coming,' she taunted, her words dripping with venom. "'Did you really think someone like Daniel would remain tied down to you forever?' Her cruel laughter echoed in the room, a stark contrast to the suffocating silence that followed. I stood there, rooted to the spot, a storm of emotions raging within me. Betrayal, hurt, anger— they all coursed through my veins, but above all, there was an overwhelming sense of resolve. You'll regret this, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. Both of you. Turning on my heel, I left them there, their shocked faces the last image I took with me. As I closed the door behind me, I knew one thing for certain. This was not the end. It was just the beginning. The beginning of their downfall and my retribution. The following days at work were a blur. As a senior executive at a leading tech firm, maintaining my composure was crucial, but the mask of normalcy was a heavy one to wear. My colleagues, accustomed to my usual decisiveness and confidence, sensed a change, but said nothing. It was late evening when I finally made my way to Richard's mansion. The grandeur of the place, once a symbol of familial pride, now seemed hollow. Richard, sitting in his study, surrounded by years of achievements and memories, looked up as I entered. "'Isabella, my dear,' he began, his voice tinged with concern. "'You look troubled. What's wrong?' I hesitated, the weight of the secret pressing against my chest. But Richard deserved to know. "'It's Daniel. And Clara,' I said, the words tasting bitter. "'They've been having an affair.' The shock on Richard's face quickly morphed into disgust. "'That boy has always been weak, but this, with your own sister, it's unforgivable.' Richard paced the room, his hands clenched in anger. I've treated you more like a daughter than a daughter-in-law, Isabella. And this is how he repays us? By betraying our family, our values? I nodded, fighting back tears. I confronted them. Daniel wants a divorce. Richard stopped, his eyes meeting mine. Then he shall have it, and he'll regret the day he decided to cross us. The air in the room thickened with his resolve. We'll make sure they both pay for this betrayal if they think they can just walk away unscathed. No, Isabella. They'll learn the hard way that actions have consequences. His words were like a balm to my wounded heart. Richard's support meant more than I could express. He wasn't just my father-in-law. He had been a mentor, a guide, and now my ally in seeking justice. I'll stand by you, Isabella, Richard declared, his voice firm. We'll plot our next steps carefully. They won't see it coming. As I left his mansion that night, a sense of determination settled within me. Clara and Daniel had awakened a storm, and I was ready to harness its fury. The path ahead was clear. It was time for retribution. The news of Richard's sudden passing came as a shock. The man who had been a pillar of strength and resolve in my life was gone. As I stood in his grand yet now somber mansion, the weight of his absence was palpable. Days passed in a blur of funeral arrangements and condolences. Amidst the grief, I was acutely aware of the impending confrontation with Daniel and Clara. They would undoubtedly come, drawn by the scent of wealth and inheritance. And they did. 
the day of the reading of the will, they arrived together, their arrogance barely concealed beneath a thin veil of mourning. Clara's eyes were calculating, glancing around the room as if already assessing her share of the riches. Daniel, on the other hand, tried to maintain a somber facade, but his impatience was evident. As Richard's attorney began reading the will, the room was enveloped in a tense silence. I could feel Daniel and Clara's anticipation, their smug confidence that they would soon be bathing in luxury and wealth, but the words that followed shattered their illusions. To my beloved daughter-in-law, Isabella, I leave my entire estate, including my shares in the company. The attorney's voice faded into the background as I watched the color drain from Daniel and Clara's faces. They were in disbelief, their eyes wide and mouths agape. Daniel was the first to break the silence. This, this must be some mistake, he stammered, his voice a mix of confusion and anger. Clara, meanwhile, turned to me, her eyes flashing with fury. You manipulated him. You planned this all along. I remained calm, meeting her gaze steadily. Richard made his decisions based on his values and principles, something you both clearly know nothing about. The attorney continued, outlining the extensive assets and responsibilities now entrusted to me. With each word, Clara's rage grew, while Daniel's face became a mask of defeated greed. As the meeting concluded, Clara approached me, her voice dripping with venom. You think you've won, Isabella? This isn't over. I faced her, my resolve unwavering. It's over for you and Daniel. You've made your bed, and now you must lie in it. With that, I left them standing amidst the ruins of their greed and betrayal, stepping into my new role with a sense of purpose and determination. Richard's legacy was now in my hands, and I was ready to uphold it with honor and justice. In the solitude of my office, memories flooded my mind. I recalled the early days with Daniel, filled with promise and affection. We were the ideal match, the ambitious executive, and the charming up-and-coming businessman. Yet, beneath the surface, there were signs I had chosen to ignore. Daniel had a way of making me feel like I was the only person in the world. Yet there were moments, subtle and fleeting, where his attention would waver, his gaze distant. I brushed these aside, attributing them to the stresses of his career. Clara was always the wild card in our family. Vibrant and impulsive, she lived life without boundaries or consequences. Our parents often turned a blind eye to her escapades, leaving me to be the voice of reason. It created a rift between us, one that only widened with time. As I sat there lost in thought, the door to my office opened. It was Daniel, his face a mix of anger and desperation. "'Isabella, we need to talk,' he said, closing the door behind him. I looked up, my expression calm. "'What is there to talk about, Daniel?' Everything has been said. He paced the room, his hands running through his hair. This is insane. You can't just take everything. It's not fair. Fair, I echoed, my voice rising. Was it fair to betray me with my own sister? Was it fair to shatter our marriage for a fling? Daniel stopped, the reality of his actions finally seeming to dawn on him. Isabella, I, I made a mistake. A mistake, I scoffed. No, Daniel, what you did was a choice and now you must live with the consequences. He looked defeated, the arrogance that had once defined him now replaced by a sense of loss. What will you do now? He asked, a hint of fear in his voice. I will lead Richard's company as he wished. And you, Daniel, you will have to find your own way, I said firmly. And Clara? He asked, almost as an afterthought. Clara will have to learn to stand on her own without relying on others to clean up her messes, I replied. As Daniel left my office, the gravity of the situation seemed to weigh him down. I turned back to the window, looking out at the city skyline. This was no longer about revenge, it was about justice and upholding Richard's legacy. The day of the will reading was marked by an electric atmosphere, charged with anticipation and dread. The opulent room, once a place of family gatherings, now served as the stage for the final act of Richard's legacy. As Richard's lawyer began to read the will, I watched Daniel and Clara from across the room. Their faces, once smug, now bore expressions of uncertainty. They had come expecting to inherit a fortune, but the reality was about to hit them like a tidal wave. To my beloved daughter-in-law, Isabella, I leave my entire estate, including my controlling shares in the company, the lawyer's voice echoed through the room. The words hung in the air, heavy with significance. I could feel every eye in the room on me, but my gaze was fixed on Daniel and Clara. 
their shock was palpable, their faces a canvas of disbelief and betrayal. Daniel was the first to break the silence, his voice a mix of anger and desperation. This is a mistake. There's no way Dad would leave everything to Isabella and nothing to me, his own son. Clara's reaction was more visceral. She leaped to her feet, her voice shrill with fury. This is a farce. Isabella must have manipulated him, poisoned his mind against us. But the lawyer continued. Unfazed by their outbursts, Richard made his wishes very clear. He saw in Isabella a strength and a capability that he felt were lacking in his own son. He believed she would carry on his legacy with integrity and honor. The room fell into a stunned silence, the weight of Richard's words settling over us. I looked at Daniel and Clara, their faces now etched with the reality of their situation. They had lost everything in their pursuit of greed and betrayal. As the meeting concluded, Daniel approached me. His demeanor changed from anger to something akin to desperation. Isabella, please, there must be something you can do. You can't just leave us with nothing. I met his gaze, my resolve firm. You made your choices, Daniel. Now, you must live with the consequences. With that, I turned away, leaving Daniel and Clara to grapple with the fallout of their actions. I stepped out of the room, a sense of duty and determination guiding my steps. Richard's legacy was now my responsibility, and I was ready to rise to the challenge. In the weeks following the will reading, I took the reins of Richard's company with a determination to honor his legacy. Meanwhile, Daniel and Clara's descent was a spectacle marked by their own doing. I heard whispers of their struggles. Daniel, who had never managed his finances independently, found himself drowning in debts. Clara, deprived of her luxurious lifestyle, was a shadow of her former self. The siblings who once thought themselves invincible were now grappling with the harsh realities of their choices. One afternoon, as I was reviewing company files, my assistant informed me that Clara was here to see me. She seems... distraught, he said cautiously. I instructed him to let her in. The door opened and Clara entered, her appearance a stark contrast to the glamorous figure she once was. Her eyes, once bright with mischief, were now dulled by desperation. Isabella, you have to help me, she pleaded, her voice trembling. I've lost everything. I have nowhere to go. I looked at her, remembering the sister I once knew, now reduced to this pitiful state. Clara, you chose this path when you betrayed me, when you betrayed our family. But I'm your sister, she cried, her tears failing to move me. Family is supposed to help each other. A sister doesn't steal her sibling's husband. You destroyed our family, Clara. I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside me. Clara's desperation turned to anger. So, this is it? You're going to just sit there in your ivory tower and watch me suffer? You made your bed, Clara. It's time you lie in it, I replied, my tone final. She left my office in a huff, her footsteps echoing with defeat. I turned back to my work, knowing that this was just the beginning of their retribution. Daniel and Clara had sown the seeds of their destruction and now they were reaping the bitter harvest. As I worked late into the evening, I realized that this was more than revenge. It was a lesson in responsibility and consequences. Daniel and Clara's downfall served as a stark reminder of the price of greed and betrayal. As the new head of Richard's company, I had the dual task of steering it towards greater heights and dealing with the fallout from Daniel and Clara's actions. It was during a late-night work session that Daniel unexpectedly appeared at my office. He was a shadow of the man I once knew. Gone was the confident, charming businessman, replaced by a figure of desperation and defeat. "'Isabella, you've won,' he began, his voice lacking its usual assertiveness. "'You have everything. The company, the wealth, but at what cost?' I regarded him coolly. "'The cost was determined by your actions, Daniel. You chose your path. He sighed, a sound of a man burdened with regret. I never thought it would come to this. Losing everything, being shunned by everyone, it's more than I can bear. And yet, you thought betraying me would have no consequences? I replied, my voice tinged with a mix of incredulity and disdain. Daniel's gaze fell to the floor. I was a fool, blinded by, I don't even know what. Clara was a mistake, a terrible, costly mistake. I couldn't help but feel a twinge of vindication at his admission. Mistakes have consequences, Daniel. You're living them now. He looked up, a flicker of the old Daniel in his eyes. Is there no chance for redemption? No way to make amends? 
I leaned back in my chair, considering his words. Redemption isn't given, Daniel. It's earned. And as for amends, your actions have caused irreparable damage. Daniel nodded, accepting the harsh truth. I understand. I just... I hope one day you can find it in your heart to forgive me. With that, he left, his departure as silent as his entrance. I sat there, contemplating the twisted road that had led us here. Daniel and Clara's downfall was a harsh reminder of the consequences of betrayal. In the weeks that followed, the company flourished under my leadership. I was determined to build a legacy that Richard would be proud of, a legacy rooted in integrity and hard work. As I looked out over the city from my office window, I realized that this was where I belonged. In the midst of challenges and triumphs, leading a company that had become my own, the betrayal and pain were behind me, and ahead was a path of strength and success. The grand hall of the company headquarters was a buzz with activity, preparations underway for the annual gala. It was a celebration of our achievements, and as the new CEO, I felt a profound sense of accomplishment. This was a testament not just to my leadership, but to the resilience and dedication of our entire team. As I mingled with the guests, my thoughts drifted to Daniel and Clara. Their fall from grace was complete. Daniel, having lost his entitlements, struggled to find his footing in a world that no longer catered to his whims. Clara, her charms faded, found herself facing the harsh realities of a life built on manipulation and deceit. Their story served as a cautionary tale within our social circles, a stark reminder of the consequences of greed and betrayal. Yet, as I observed the people around me celebrating our success, I realized that my focus had shifted. It was no longer about Daniel and Clara's downfall, but about the future we were building. The evening progressed with toasts and accolades, my team lauding the company's new direction and the fresh perspective I brought. Amidst the applause and congratulations, I felt a sense of peace. I had navigated the storm of betrayal and emerged stronger, more determined. Later, as I stood alone on the balcony, overlooking the city lights, I reflected on the journey. The pain of Daniel and Clara's betrayal seemed a distant memory, a chapter in my life that had closed. In its place was a newfound strength and a clear vision for the future. Richard's legacy was secure, and under my stewardship, the company was reaching new heights. I had found my calling, not in the shadows of a marriage marred by deceit, but in the halls of corporate strategy and leadership. As the night drew to a close, I realized that this was just the beginning. A new chapter in my life was unfolding, one where the scars of the past served as reminders of the lessons learned and the future held endless possibilities. I walked back into the hall, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, with the knowledge that I had overcome the worst. The future was mine to shape, and I was ready to lead with integrity, passion, and a newfound understanding of the complexities of the human heart.